So what I would want you to do is if you think that value realism um, causes an issue with NTT is just lay out the propositions you take NTT to be, then add any propositions that you think value realism has to hold, and then create some kind of incoherence from there. Um, so, open the, so that should be. Yeah, I'll just open the deck. Give me a second. Hold on. Yeah, what's up? Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Let's see. Near one. Okay. Uh, here's like the first part, right? So, on your current moral view, if all traits true of a given human who has moral value are switched to match those true of a given non human animal who doesn't have moral value, is there any point in the trade? Wait, 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 wait. Why are you using the natural language dialogue? Um, that's that's going to be like a big issue right from the outset. What you need to do right from the outset is use the formal argument that Ask Yourself presents. You can't use this natural language thing. The, the natural language thing isn't even in like a propositional format. It's mm. just a loose language that is presented to give people an idea of how we should basically be approaching. Um, yeah, so the, the first thing we should do is, is start off from the actual set of propositions that name the trait holds to. Okay, um, sure. And then, and then I think the big thing is, I can go grab those propositions. What you should do is, you should get me Sorry, a what? set of propositions that, like, value realism has to hold to. I, you cut out for me. Can people hear me? I, I can hear you now. You just cut out. Bryn's for asking minute. for the list of propositions that makes the value response um, a good response. Yeah, well, not 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 even that. It just like you can just give me the entire set of propositions you think a value realist has to hold to. Um, and then from there, I can we can try and see if we can derive a contradiction. Um, yeah, but like, like I, I, I can go grab the the NTT propositions. That's fine. I, okay, your so big I thing is your answer. big thing is to like to actually give me your set of propositions that you think okay, are. Sure. Hey guys, so we're gonna gonna be, so before we get into the video, a, I just peeled the um, perspectives, and the NTT is adamantly an anti-perspective um, position. Yeah, you could say that, but. Um, I mean, we're just gonna need we're just gonna need some kind of argument, right? Uh, you can't just like sure. say that, right? But like you could like, you could say something like, um, if you're a value theorist, then what makes what grounds moral statements are going to be in your perceptions. If your moral perceptions are only known to you, um, in the moment, then when the name the trait person wants to say, well, in these future cases, these are the moral actions. The contradiction is, well, what's going to be grounding is only going to be what's in the moment. Not one, like, one second, one second, one second. You're getting ahead. Uh, oh, I thought you wanted like the contradiction. Yeah, I do. But one second. Okay, so there's the prop. Yeah, yeah. So there's the propositions of NTT. Now, what we'll do is just give me like a a set of propositions that hold to your perspectivalist view that you were. Doing. Let me see. Mm -hmm. well, I'll start P3, or or you can type them out too. It doesn't matter. I I can type them out, or you can. You can type them out, but I, I just like I'm starting P3 now. So what's our, our th uh, Socrates? Do you want to do? I would like. Uh... No, no, I just like talking with Bryn. Oh, okay. Sure. So, I mean, value realism would hold that. Uh, yeah, actually, okay. First of all, I'm gonna need like a clarification. That's why I guess I want to try it. So, what does moral value mean in the context of P1? It's actually. I take it to be agnostic to any kind of like meta-ethical view. The whole point is just that um, if it's the case that it applies in the human context, it also has to apply in the non-human context on pain of P and not P. The idea there is that if you could create some kind of distinguishing value that's you know within our concept of moral value, that's going to be the trait. Um, so that would actually just be an answer to P2. So we don't actually need to clarify moral value particularly for the argument. Um, 
unless you can create like some kind of view of moral value that is contradictory with the conclusion. So, as far like as far as I understand it, right? Like uh, when I watched the ex explanation of the video, right? Like the idea of the trade equalization process is that you take the set of propositions that are true of one thing and you make it true of the other, right? Sure. Okay. So if it is true of that one thing that it has moral value and it is not true of the other that it has moral value, like... Wait, wait, wait. Are we are we getting into the propositions for the contradiction now or are we still in a clarificatory I'm stage? Of... I'm talking about the trade equalization process. <laughs> Right. Okay. I'm. I'm just still confused. Like, are we? Are we trying to clarify something right now? The yeah, the, the issue is is like trade equalization process. Yeah. I mean, I. I don't. It, I what. I don't know if there's there's much more to say on it. The idea is just like we can almost look at it like set theoretically, right? Um. We just take one set of propositions and another set of propositions that have some kind of divergence. Well, I don't even know if they have to have a divergence. We just then go by some like equalization function such that okay. set one is is um, any case where there's a proposition true in there, it's also now true in the second case. Okay. So like you would say, like there is A, 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 right? Like A is true of both the human and the animal, B, C, or yeah, like there are like differences in certain traits, but what if there is the moral value trait, right? And I'm not talking about like my perception of it, I'm talking about the actual trait. Uh, oh yeah, but that that that's going to be a tautological answer, right? Because then you're saying that the point at which the moral value changes is the point at which the moral value changes, which is okay. totally it's totally an answer. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also then going to be contradictory to say that there the point at, the if the trade is moral value, then it's a direct contradiction to say that there is no difference in moral value if the moral value is the same. So not only would the answer be non-informative it would also like most directly lead to a contradiction versus like almost any other trait sorry i'm not really understanding yeah so if you if you say that like so if we say that the trait where moral value changes is the trait where moral value changes or just is moral value um all right, all right. that's so that, 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 that's just that's yeah, just going to be a tautological answer right um and then mm. more more importantly that like if we get into our semantics there if we say that we can swap the moral value, but not swap the moral value, we are like in very dangerous contradiction territory. I'm not quite sure what that sentence would even mean at that point. Sorry. So yeah, here's what, what I wanted to get at like what the value here means. So like when you ask me, uh, how would I put this? Like, for example, my view right now is something like this. When I look at, like, different humans and, let's say, bad things happening to them, like, I would oppose it. Is that, like, something that, like, would be a position where you could start drawing entity from? Like, sorry, can I you just repeat? Yeah, yes, sorry, I turned down. Like, when I look at, hu like, human suffering or something, like, I would want to stop that. Like, is that, like, a fine position to start for an entity? Like, I wouldn't want them to, I don't know, be ground up for meat or something. Yeah, I mean that's an absolutely fine okay. place to start. Yeah, um, okay. the the usual case where entity is run though is the case in which there is a distinction in our evaluation. Um, right, right. So like for the animal, like let's say that I would be fine with some degree of suffering or whatever. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. So, but I'm saying that. So there is my perception of the value, and there is a property, that accounts for the value, and I'm saying that's that's like a value property but it's separate from my perception of the value is uh, that's like a trait of the thing that's like uh, an a that the human has and the a b that I, and an a that the animal doesn't have sure yeah we can okay. we can talk about um like value properties and, and per, uh, perception like um i don't think that like perspective accounts of of morality is going to give it that much of an issue though um because it's still in this case that all what we're talking about is what grounds um, the moral value. So I don't, I don't really know if that there's a distinction there. If you think that the um, perceptivist rather than the projectivist has a response to name the trait, again, we'll just return to sort of the bar that I set at the beginning of the conversation, which is um, 
I've given you the propositions that that we take NTT to hold to. We can then we can like I'll be very charitable on what kind of propositions we want the perceptivist to hold. And then you should just be able to derive a contradiction. What I don't really want to do, because uh, I'm I don't have like a ton of time, is sit here rambling about different kind of meta-ethical theories. I, I think that if you have an issue with name the trait, what you should be able to do is, is sort of deliver a clear-cut argument that derives a contradiction from from one view to to name the trait. So I'll just sort of wait for that if you have it. Okay, okay sure. Would you be fine with moving like to debate crucibles three? Because like a lot of people are, I don't know, talking a lot of shit about me in the chat, kind of, I don't know. Um, I don't think that, that moving will help that much. I think that the the thing that we can do is we can just sort of ask them to be polite. And if they, they don't want to, then it's, it's your prerogative to just leave. I think that if you do leave, then one thing that you should probably do is that you should probably just stop presenting this as like a view until you have a more uh, coherent argument, or at least an argument at all. Um, yeah, it should be formulated syllogistically. Well, it doesn't doesn't even need to be syllogistically, right? Um, it doesn't need to, but it should be. I'm not making this serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that like at, at a minimum, what I don't really want to do is just like spend some time talking about like different meta ethical theories and whether or not, um, like the perception versus projectivist account value is is going to be a problem here. I think that if it does present a problem, that we should just be able to very quickly um, derive the issue. I mean, um, otherwise, I think. Kind of- like, like, like to, to, to be like completely clear, right? I don't really have the view that name the trade is necessarily um, coherent with all other views. My view is that I just haven't been presented something that delivers a, a problem altogether. Um, and I think that that's, that's the much more reasonable view to hold. It could be maybe that like the perceptivist account is an issue for it, but I, I have not seen an argument. Okay. okay. Like, yeah. So, yeah, but you see, I think I'm still... Like the, what I'm doing right now is just trying to understand a couple of things, right? So, like, I didn't want to present an objection. I just asked you a clarifying question of what is meant by value there. Again, I don't, I don't think that we actually have, um, like, I think that we're agnostic to the okay. definition of value. No, there, the, the, the 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 idea though is like just to be clear that the interlocutor that we're engaging with presumably is actually the one saying that there is a difference in value there, um, and so a a type of response to the argument can be to give a definition of value such that um, such that the human value and the animal value will be different. The issue with that, of course, is that it's not entirely likely that most people will go about doing that. I think that most people have like a fairly similar understanding of, of value in this case, which is just like the underlying normative reasons um, for whether, whether or not an agent should do something. The, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I don't, I don't, I don't know that that clarification actually matters. I think it's just sort of agnostic. If you have a definition of value that does matter, then you should just be able to present that definition. Hey, Brian, I thought of something. Of um, under the perspective, uh, the respectable view, wouldn't it be the case that um, any any projection on some situation <laughs> is going to be underdetermined? No. Why not? I mean, hey, why, Sok, why? We, we want to just let Bryn and Sasha debate right now. So, like, if you want to go okay. after, that'd be good. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. So, when you say that, okay, like, when I look at the trade equalization process explanation, right, like, uh, is there a contradiction in saying that, like, all of the properties of the animals are something, 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 all the properties of the human are something, 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 and then one holds the value property and one doesn't. Like, what was the problem with that? Yeah, I mean, the problem with that is that you're then saying that <laughs> there is still a distinction. You haven't actually completed the trade equalization. The okay. yeah, I mean, so like, unless you, um, yeah. So I guess it's like it's more in, uh, in more complicated metaphysics. And then we're talking about whether or not um, value properties are intrinsic. The issue with that is. I don't think that that's going to be uh, killing for name the trait either, because we still have a property difference there. Um, so okay. I, I, again, if you if you think that there is an issue with non-intrinsic value properties, what we need is an argument. Um, like I, I'm not really I'm not really down to just get into talking about complex metaphysics. Um, especially when we're sort of presenting answers of or questions of the sort of well, what if. 
Um, I think that if you're going to have the view that there is a problem with this argument, then what you should be able to do is take the propositions that someone who holds a um, non-intrinsic view of value properties might hold and be able to derive a contradiction. And, and if you haven't done that yet, I mean, we're, we're good to like lock up the debate crucible. You can go create an argument and come back. Um, or if you have one right now, you can just present it, I guess. Mm. Well, so would you want like a syllogism or something or? Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's, that's generally what we're looking for here. I think it's, it's sort of at the point where um, I, I do see like what you're suggesting, but I, I think that the issue is, is that you need to actually present an argument. Um, I, like, like, is, like, 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 cause, sorry, cause you, do you, is, do you understand is, Sasha, how like anybody could come up with an infinite set of what if style questions against name the trait. Um, and if we took those as being reasonably defeating for the argument, we would just never have any kind of argument at all. Um, we could do that to any, we could do that to any argument, right? What you sort of need to do if you have this like very skeptical view of name the trait is to actually be able to present an argument. So I'm I'm willing to to bother with an argument if it gets presented, but until then I'm just sort of um, so, I don't care. Okay, so if yeah, that, here here's the, here's the actual issue. If if you're agreeing that the trait of moral value is true of the thing, then I'm not not seeing the problem of answering moral value because if that is in fact my in my view like the only thing that can yeah, explain so, why i value the thing i'm yeah, not so, understanding so, what type of other answer i could provide you yeah so it's 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 just an uninformative answer um you have to understand that like if if, if the question is is that if i ask you uh at what point does this moral value become a different moral value and your answer is it is at the point where this moral value becomes a different moral value. We haven't said anything informative. Um, if your if your if your view if your view right is that is morality is just completely um, irreducible and opaque, that's a certain kind of a view you could definitely take. But I, I don't think that most people are going to be willing to take that view on. And in fact, I think that's a incredibly large problem for any conception of morality that we would say that it. For a second, you said that if most people most people wouldn't take what view. Yeah, the view that morality is irreducible and opaque. Um, okay. Which which I take to mean, like, we just literally just say, like, this thing has moral value. And we haven't even, we don't, we don't even provide, like, any kind of um, account for what value means there. I think that if you... That is you, like, I think, similar to my view. Like, like, e like even, on, even on the perceptivalist account, they still do have the ability to reduce moral value. Like, it's, they don't have, like, an irreductionist view to that point. Um, I think the, the, the value realism view that I was talking about is, in fact, like the view that moral values are irreducible. Yeah, but so so, what do you mean by irreducibility in that context? Because the other issue here, and I think the bigger one, is that you're actually claiming that morality is opaque, in a way that that is very interesting to me. But I'm also not even sure derives a contradiction. Uh, with anything that's held by the argument. I think that the, the issue is, is it's just like it's it's an answer that would provide no meaning or suggest that morality has no meaning. Like like you, you do understand that like the question that I'm asking you is um, at what point does your perception of the value property change? And your answer is it's at the point where my perception of the value property changes. Like no, do you I'm think that that's an informative no. answer? I'm not saying that my perception changes like my perception of moral value changes when the value property changes, but it's in the same way that. Sure. Okay. So, me. so, so if I if I then ask you the question, when does the value property change? What's the answer to that question? I, yeah, I don't understand how to answer that. Like, okay, I mean, but that that seems like a very big issue. Because you, you do you under, you understand how that's like a that's a very trivial question from my original question. Like it's not even that big of a difference, right? Like we're like the, the, the other issue is I think that perception of the value property in this case actually just is um, synthetic from what we mean by value property in this case. So the question I think was already included there. I'm very interested in in how you would begin to go about answering from that point though like if i if i ask you um at what point does the value property change 
Like, is there even beginning to be some kind of coherent answer there? Yeah, I don't think so, right? Because like... Okay, but that, if... that seems to be a, a much bigger issue for your metaphysics, right? Like, it, that seems like much less of an issue for our argument, because for starters, you ha still haven't derived like a contradiction with the argument there, or given any incoherence to the I, argument there. When did I say that I'm going to derive some sort of, like, all I said is that on my view, it seems like a question, it's a question that I'm not really going to be able to answer in a way uh, that, that's going to satisfy you. But like, I'm not saying that right. there's some sort of, I'm saying that like, on my view, it just doesn't seem like there's a way because it's in the same way that if you ask me like at what what would have like you agree that object x doesn't have a hand and object y has a hand at what point would it be true that object y has a hand right and like the only answer i could give you is well when you give it the hand so obviously it's going to be uninformative but i'm not saying no that's not that, that's not true because um i mean unless you have like a very very weird view of um Mariology. I think that that answer is actually pretty pretty well understood. The the idea there is we have actually like a set of properties that would be sufficient criteria um, and ne necessary criteria for a hand. And then once we've met sufficient criteria and necessary criteria, then we do have a hand. So for example, like we can break these things down into like has like fingers and a palm and etc. Like whatever whatever we want to do to construct our concept of a hand. The the issue is is that your idea of what a value property seems to actually be one that has no grounding uh, or has no concept to it. The, the issue with that is that when I ask you questions that seem pretty trivial from the original like idea of NTT, you're saying that there's like an incoherent, like an incoherency there, but I'm not sure how it's on our end. Um, and I'm, I'm very I'm not interested. Saying it's your, I'm not saying it's on your end. I'm saying that on my view, uh, which I'm putting forward as irreducible value properties, that don't necessarily depend on anything else. Like only that changing that will change like my evaluation of the thing. But so I, I agree with you that that's like kind of a weird view and presenting an argument for that is a different issue. But I just you actually, to, like, you actually haven't presented an argument yet. I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, I'm not you, saying that I have, I'm, I'm saying that it's a different issue. I'm saying R that right. like if presupposing my view, like do you think there is a way that I could answer in a way that wouldn't be problematic, I guess? Yeah, well, for for one, for one, I don't actually know that your view makes any sense. Um, what I'd want to do is like see like a set of propositions that your view holds, um, and then from there you'd have to derive some kind of incoherence. Like that's again, that's sort of been my benchmark for this entire conversation. Is um, it sounds like a lot of other people have already tried going down the like working through your metaphysics um, pathway, and at, at this point, my usual view when we get to like these levels of discussion is. Um, Here's like the set of propositions NTT holds. Give me the set of propositions that you think a value realist has to hold. I'm more than willing to be charitable with that and then just derive some kind of incoherency. Okay. So, sorry, let me look at the deduction tree. Uh, well, so, so yeah, I hold to there are irreducible value properties in the world. So I guess, yeah, I mean, it seemed like you go, you were correct in the sense that like, if it is in fact irreducible, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't actually talk, talk about any other parts. Then when does the value property change? Uh, yeah, it changes when it is switched out in the same way that like, when does atom X change? The atom X changes when it changes. I don't like. I'm still like, I think that the issue is, is you're not really getting what I'm asking you for. Um, I don't really want rambling. I, I do really just want an argument. Um, I know that before, when I've listened to you debate, you have that level of um, requirement for your, a lot of your interlocutors, and I'm sort of just putting that onto you now. What I what I want you to do is, for the time being, if you don't have an argument, um, just concede the point and then come back when you have an argument. I'm, I'm more than willing to have a follow-up debate um, and I'm, I'm more than willing to be extremely charitable, but it, it sounds like you haven't even really gone through the due diligence to come to any sort of conclusion. So when I when I start asking you for the things that matter um, to come to these conclusions, you haven't even really given me a, like a anything close to a set of propositions that a value realist would hold, which to me seems like at least the baseline. Um, 
And, and I think that even more importantly, you probably should just come up with an argument first. Uh, sure. If you're willing to do that again uh, today, then I will ping you when I write out the propositions. If you're good. With that. Sure, but I mean, just just to like just to be clear, like for the time being, can we be on the same page that at this point you have to concede that you don't have this view, like you don't have a reason to hold the view. Otherwise, you have to just admit that you're motivated. Sure, would view. Um, I think that NTT is incoherent or that the, the value realist account defeats NTT. I think that like these are, I, I'm not I sure that I like actually either of those claims. Okay. So what, what is, what is your view that you're trying to, to defend against NTT that everyone has a problem with? Just So if I believe that the value, that my evaluation of the object comes down to this irreducible value property and you're asking me when it changes, then I don't know. I don't understand how am I supposed to answer that in an informative way. Like it's not gonna change in ver uh, because like when any other way to switch, right? It's that specific proposition that's true of the thing, and only switching that will change my like the value. So I'm still like failing to understand, like on my view, like what could be you know set of uh, that would answer the question. That, that's sure. my problem. Sure. So I think there's a lot of rambling there. If you had to like make that concise, what what do you think the simplest way to get your view across would be? Like, what do you what do you think are your like one to three like big problems with name the trait um, in like the most concise way that you could? Sure. So, well, okay. So I I was trying to be pretty concise there. I guess I'll like try to think of an answer that's more concise. So give me a second. Okay, so you're asking me when, on my view, does the irreducible property value property change? No, 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 no. Like I, I don't. I want like just a proposition, <laughs> like something, what, something that like isn't. Trait asks. Yeah, but I, I, what I don't want is like something indexed to like me and all that. I don't want like any of that baggage. I want just like a straightforward proposition, like um, something like. If value realism is true, then NTT is fill-in, or um, or if um, or like NTT necessarily holds X, or NTT fails necessarily due to Y. Just something oh, like gosh. something in incredibly concise, so that what we don't do is end up talking past each other a lot. What I want is just like a straightforward claim, and then. Sure. And then, and then I think that the best the best thing to do is just to go actually construct an argument. Sure, I'll write it out for you. Uh, I'll tag you when we have it. Sure. So, yeah, I think I think for like the for the time being, it, it sounds like you have like the beginnings of a criticism. Um, but for like the the time being, I think it's it's better just to sort of hold the view of like agnosticism. Um, I, I think that for the time being, I'm going to continue to hold the view that in the trait hasn't had any problems presented to me that that really worry me um but I'm, I'm happy to explore an issue if you can come up with like a really clear and concise argument um in the future That's fine. And, and, and more more importantly i think if you like if you if you're having like this like hypothetical sort of um discussion where you come up with like a view that the vast majority of people wouldn't hold or that is very unreasonable and then that is an issue with name the trait I think that that's like, I think that's just like kind of silliness. So like one thing that we could do is like, I could be like, um, yeah, I'm a dialetheist now. And if I'm a dialetheist, it's also true that name the trait is incoherent um, or I'm a trivialist. And it's the case that name the trait is a contradiction in itself. The, the issues with that is I don't think anyone is reasonably a dialetheist. And I don't think anyone is reasonably a trivialist. Um, I think that furthermore, like if you want to come up with like a criticism of name the trait, you should also be able to defend the presuppositions that get you to to the issue of name the trait. Because there was one point in this discussion where we said like, why don't we just presuppose? Um, and we could. It's just the issue is 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 that kind of thinking in, in philosophy to me is just like kind of masturbatory. Like we just I don't know why we would do it. Sure.
All right. Well, it was nice chatting to you. Um, I'm more than happy to to DM about this or talk about this in the philosophy channel as well, um, if you want to tag me or in general as well. Uh, okay. I hope that you can come up with a with a criticism. It's always it's always decent when we make progress on this argument. So, yeah. Good luck. Thank you.